Wait, here. Good boy. I thought you talking to me then. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to another series of Pooches at Play. And what a series we have for you. That's right. Not only do we have the dream team back with the main star, Darcy, Lara has a new addition in Vindy. Vindy close. But I think we're going to have to keep our egos in check because these two have got much uh, bigger and more likeable characters than the three of us. Well, speak for yourself. Yeah. What they make up for in cuteness, we make up for in knowledge with plenty of tips and tricks. True. From what to feed them and training techniques to keep them under control. Two vet tips and grooming advice. Yes, we have plenty in store. So sit back, get comfy, and get ready for all those tips and tricks. I know your girlfriend's over right. there. I know. I can see her. Love, ain't it grand? <coughs> Greyhounds have become very popular to adopt and they make a great family pet. So Fiona, let's start with the work that you do at Gumtree Greys and helping these adorable animals. Thank you. Um, so we are Queensland and Victoria based and we uh, rescue the greyhounds from the racing industry, mm -hmm. rehabilitate them in foster care and then rehome them by adopting them out. Now obviously you think they make good pets because yes. <laughs> you've got three, you might be able to see two but little Sophia is in the shade there. What makes them such great pets? Definitely the, the fact they're so lazy, <laughs> <laughs> as you can see. Um, so very lazy and uh, really low energy. So really don't need a lot of exercise. Nice. And they're so quiet, they don't make a lot of noise. Yes, they don't bath. <laughs> don't you, need, bath. you need a good big couch though, because they do like to yeah. laze around and get yeah, comfortable. True, true. Now, if someone does want to foster or adopt one, what are some of the things that they do need to keep in mind? So, I mean, greyhounds, because you're going to be uh, fostering or adopting them as adult dogs, yes. um, they will have never been socialised with any other dog breeds. So the biggest challenge is socialising them with small dogs yes. like your Darcy. Yeah, it looks like uh, that. <laughs> yeah. and, um, but then just general day to day, things like uh, the floor surfaces, carpets, floorboards, mm. uh, noise in the street, traffic, all of that kind of thing is uh, very new to them. Yes. And then of course, taking them away from multiple greyhounds. So anxiety in terms of being alone. Well, that's why we reckon <laughs> get two get greyhounds two. <laughs> if you're considering having them. But there are also other things as well, like exercising, even though they don't need a lot, mm -hmm. there are still some rules that um, people need to know about. Sure. So in Victoria specifically, mm -hmm. we are an on lead law. Yes. So they can never be off lead. It would be illegal. In Queensland, that's not. If you want them to have a run, mm -hmm. of course, you can only do that legally on your land, off lead. However, you can uh, become a member to like slipping tracks, which okay. is where trainers Fabulous. will take their yes. dogs. When Darcy is here with yeah. greyhounds, he loves to chase the ball. I don't let him do it, and not because I'm worried about them, but because a dog has instinct, and I just don't want to push them too far sure. with Darcy potentially tapping into that looking like a rabbit. Yeah. <laughs> Other dog owners need to be mindful of this, don't they? And, and when they're approaching a greyhound with their own dogs. I think all dog owners should be considerate of all dogs. I yes. mean, you wouldn't walk into any kind of dog straight away. Mm. But, you know, yes, greyhounds uh, meeting other dogs on the streets and dog owners meeting various different dogs on yes. streets. It's it's all, it's it's polite to, you know, do the distance, various, exactly. a little bit of distance. <laughs> and if there's a chance a greyhound is wearing a muzzle, it's yes. not necessarily meaning that they're aggressive. It could just be early stages That's right. of them understanding to meet other dogs. That's right. And they have to be able to meet and get close to somebody like Darcy <laughs> and smell Darcy to recognise it he is a dog yeah. and not something they need to chase. That's right. And then, of course, we don't want to increase their anxiety by letting our dogs run up to them True. as well. Yeah. If people want to foster, there's an application process. You always need foster carers, don't you? We always need foster carers. <laughs> we don't work with kennels. We bring the dogs in mm -hmm. and they go straight to a foster home. So okay. we are always needing foster carers. Donations like monthly donations are mm -hmm. the best. Yep, yeah, lovely, keeps great. you going. Yeah. And of course, Pet Stock Assist have provided donations in yes, the past as well. So if you would like to find out more about the work of Gumtree Greys, visit their website, gumtreegreys.com.au. Perfect. And if you'd like to find out more about the work of Pet Stock Assist, visit theirs. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. <laughs> like, thank Very you. chilled. <laughs> hey, you like your new buddies? <laughs> they say that you should practice what you preach. And I have to admit, I wasn't necessarily practicing what I was preaching when I was saying to people that they needed to brush their dog's teeth daily until my two and three year old poodles went in for a dental and lost about 25% of their teeth. I realized at that point that I had to commit to daily brushing. Dogs are easy to do if they're a bit sleepy and chilled. And I use, of course, a doggy toothpaste. 
And I actually use, at this stage, because I'm in the process of training my dogs to accept it, I use a child's toothbrush. So it has a small head and soft bristles. And I'm training them at the moment, and they're tolerating it beautifully, to accept having the cheek side of their teeth, so the area you can see, brushed. I try to brush for one to two minutes. They like the taste of the toothpaste. The one that I use has got an enzyme in it which helps to neutralise plaque, but there are other lots of ones on the market and you can speak to your vet about the best one. You can also use a finger brush to start off with if you find that that's easier. Somehow we expect dogs' mouths to just self-clean. I mean, we brush our teeth twice a day and we go to the dentist every six to 12 months and they still remove plaque. So it's not surprising that a dog's mouth looks pretty bad if they haven't had anything done to it after a year. In the old days, they just throw them a bone and it would clean their teeth pretty well, but bones come with a lot of risk. So daily brushing is the key, isn't it guys? If you would like to know more about how to do it and how it can impact on their health if you don't, visit poochesatplay.com. There's nothing better than being able to take your dog along with you when you're heading out for a coffee or a bite to eat. But of course, we wanna make sure for your own enjoyment and that of other diners that they know how to behave in this setting. Whether you've got a new puppy or an older dog that's a little bit reactive, I've got some training techniques to help. Firstly, teach your dog on your bed or on your mat. Place training is really good for many situations. It's really simple. You literally lure your dog over to their bed and then when their feet are touching it, you mark it with a treat, and then over time, you can start to shape it and put it on cue. The other useful one, particularly if your dog is a little bit reactive, is the look at me. So when you see a dog approaching or another person, if they react to people, you basically look at me, yes, good boy. And again, rewarding them when they're distracted as well, they're nice and calm, that's the behavior that you wanna mark. If you have a little dog like Darcy, then make sure you don't pick them up if they tend to react because you're reinforcing the fear and you're also putting them in a power position so they're likely to react even more. If you've just got yourself a new puppy, teach them the cafe latte. To do that, you basically have them on lead, they're sitting nice and close to you and if they start whining or wanting to jump up to get you, you completely ignore them and the moment they go quiet or they even sit or lie down, yes, you mark that with a treat. Good boy. And remember, take along their favourite toy or even occupier. This Vita Pet Lambs ear is a good one, so they can enjoy their treat while you're enjoying your meal. And remember, treats should make up no more than 10% of your dog's total daily calorie intake. For more training tips and tricks, visit Vita Pet Central. Oh, and if you happen to be in Heathcote with your dog, make sure you check out this Heathcote Wine Hub. It is beautiful. The beer garden is awesome, and it's very dog friendly. Isn't it, Dust? Yeah. You may have noticed a lot of pet food delivery services and raw food products on supermarket shelves. Some marketed to both cats and dogs, which to me doesn't seem right. Now, Narelle, does this trend worry you? It does. I find it highly concerning because a diet that's complete and balanced for dogs needs to have the right balance of muscle meats, organ meats, bone, vegetables and other key nutrients that meets their species specific needs for things like growth and development and just overall health. Whereas cats have their own set of unique nutritional needs such as requiring high levels of protein and taurine, vitamin A and the omega-6 fat arachidonic acid. So a diet that is nutritionally optimal for cats will lead to nutritional imbalances in dogs and a diet that is nutritionally optimal for dogs will lead to some pretty serious health effects in cats. So unfortunately, pet owners can't have it both ways. So what should pet owners look for if they see a product that's marketed to both cats and dogs or, you know, just in general? Well, a lot of companies will add back in those nutrients that are essential for cats. But because our dogs don't need those nutrients in such high levels, it puts an extra burden on their system and increases the risk of gastrointestinal upset, obesity and even pancreatitis. And if we're looking at foods more generally, pet owners definitely want to avoid artificial additives and they also want to avoid vague terms such as just meat Ooh, or... Like this. Exactly like that. So just meat or just vegetables because you really don't know what you're getting or what you're feeding your pet and that can often mean poorer quality. 
What about those pet food delivery services that seem like something that I'd order for myself? Yeah, I know what you mean. I've also seen home delivery raw food meals that are basically just minced meat with a little bit of uh, organ meat and vegetables mixed in. And while they do add back in some synthetic vitamins and minerals, some are still significantly deficient in calcium. So if pet owners don't see ground bone listed in the ingredients panel, then they need to look for another source of calcium. And if there isn't one, then that's a major red flag because that will absolutely lead to musculoskeletal disorders, along with some pretty other serious health effects, especially in growing puppies. And is this something that concerns you? It's extremely concerning because people are being misled into feeding their pets an incomplete diet that will ultimately lead to health issues later in life. Unfortunately, most pet owners are drawn into diet fads and marketing hype without truly understanding what their cat or dog specifically needs from a nutritional standpoint. So what should people look for then? I think the first thing pet owners should question is how long has the company been manufacturing pet foods? And more importantly, how long have they been specialising in raw food feeding? Then they need to look to see if the product is complete and balanced. So with all of the required nutrients that their pet needs for their specific life stage, and I think it's really important to know that I can call and speak to an expert at the company that I'm buying from, rather than calling, say, a general service number where the person at the other end of the line may not be qualified or even knowledgeable in pet food nutrition. And it's for all of those reasons that I personally use and recommend Big Dog Pet Foods because Big Dog's been in the industry for 20 years now, so long before raw food feeding became a fad, and you can see from their ingredients list that their food is complete and balanced. So if you'd like to find out more, go to the Big Dog website and don't give them the stuff like this. I think I broke your plate, sorry. Becoming a puppy raiser with Guide Dogs Australia plays a really important role and it must be fulfilling too because Kerry, you have done this six times. Yes, I have. <laughs> I have. Why, why did you become a puppy raiser with Guide Dogs? Okay, so I originally started because we had two dogs which passed away. They both passed away from old age within six months of each other. Yeah. And then we didn't have a family pet and the connection actually came because uh, one of my daughters works for guide dogs. Okay. And she said, Mum, why don't you try puppy raising? She said, I think it'd be really rewarding for you. And how does it make you feel? It's wonderful. It's very rewarding. They're very loving dogs. And it's wonderful just helping out a, a, you know, a charity like Guide Dogs because they do rely on a lot on volunteer work and community support. Absolutely. And what does it involve being the puppy raiser? We get everything supplied from Guide Dogs. Mm -hmm. We must go on a couple of uh, training sessions yes. and things like that. We incorporate our family life and home life with the dogs, mm -hmm. teaching them not to jump on the furniture and <laughs> things like that. Going shopping, just getting used to loud noises, kids, all different things that they will be exposed to in later life. And it just becomes them more desensitised, if you like. That's right, that really important socialisation that they yes, need. Yes, yes. And how do guide dogs support you, I guess, in the training and just in general? Oh, look, they're just wonderful. Uh, we have training sessions mm -hmm. and we socialise the pups together. If there's any issues that you have at all with, with your pup, any problem that you've come across, they will help us out with that. So we get the food, the bedding, their collars, leads, uh, bowls, and they supply the next guard spectra every month. So obviously I know viewers at home, one of the things they must wonder is how do you give them up? What are some of the challenges? It is hard, it is hard, but you do know that they're going on to make a difference in somebody else's life, which is very, very important, and that's what we do it for. But we all shed a tear. Like, <laughs> whenever we have to bring them back, there's always a box of tissues here, there's always the staff to give you a little bit of a hug and, and a bit of support. But you know that the dogs, are, they love coming here as well. Oh, nice. They love coming back in, and they play with their friends. And, and what are the rewards? Oh, the rewards are just wonderful. They're, the dogs are so loving. They're so full of love and loyal. And uh, the community actually uh, gets behind you as well. So I know when we're out training or something, you know, everybody always stops and looks and wants to chat with the dogs and find out about them and all of that. If you'd like to support raising a guide dog puppy, there's a campaign run in Petstock each June, supported by NextGuard Spectra. So visit Petstock or jump online to find out more. And if you'd like to support Guide Dogs Australia, then visit guidedogs.com.au. <laughs> this week
week's breed in focus is the Australian Shepherd, clearly. And I'd like to introduce you to this gorgeous Aussie crew. Okay, we've got Jaeger, we've got Django, we've got Blue, is that Blue? And Chief over there. Now, despite their name, this breed actually originated in the United States. That's right. They were bred as herding dogs, which is a role that many still perform today. They're very active and love nothing <laughs> more than a job to do, just like their close relation, the Border Collie. They also make wonderful family pets and are highly intelligent, but they have loads of energy. Definitely. They, need an outlet. they do. They are a very trainable breed and they're eager to learn. So I would suggest channeling this into dog sports such as herding and obedience and other activities that keep their brains and their bodies moving. They do develop very close bonds with their owners and human family, are easy going with other dogs and pets and are good with children. They're a medium sized breed and they live for about 12 to 15 years. Don't listen. They have a double coat, so they need to be brushed and raked regularly to help avoid matting. They come in a range of colours, as you can see here, yes. and their eyes are particularly beautiful. They can have blue and brown eyes, which is called heterochromia, and that can be one eye being blue and the other eye being brown, or it can be a mixture in one eye. And everything in between. Now, they can range from being very shy to very outgoing, and they love human company. But like all working dogs, they need plenty of daily exercise, and they need to be able to engage in gains that helps fulfil their need for a job. If you don't, you will end up with an anxious dog that barks, chews, digs, or other destructive behaviour. Now, they're considered generally healthy, but depending on their lineage, they can be prone to hip dysplasia, thyroid disease and numerous eye problems. So do get your puppy's eyes examined yes. early by a veterinary ophthalmologist. They can also suffer from multiple drug sensitivity, which is uncommon but can be fatal. And these dogs that are affected can even be allergic to heartworm prevention. They can be DNA tested. They can also suffer from epilepsy and congenital deafness. That's why it's always important to do your research about any breed you are considering. Thank you. And get pet insurance too. Yes, very important. Well, look at two. To learn how HIF pet insurance can help your pet in times of need, visit hif.com.au. Evie, <laughs> Sally, come. There can be a lot of stigma around dogs wearing muzzles. Now, Melissa, you've decided to put a muzzle on both of your adorable girls, um, Zelda, who we actually Zelda. had in series one as a puppy, who's a much bigger girl now. Tell me, why did you decide to do this? A couple of reasons. Um, the first reason is these girls play really rough and they use their teeth. And the second reason is that Zelda has actually had a few bad experiences where she has been rushed yes. and attacked by some dogs. So she's now a little bit reactive mm -hmm. to certain dogs in certain circumstances. Yes, very common. I keep the girls away from from lots from busy areas, but I put the muzzle on just to to give another an extra message yes. that you know we do need our space. Yes. And the third thing is to stop people really approaching my girls. Yes. <laughs> How did you get the girls comfortable in wearing these muzzles? Positive training. Yes. So when the muzzle comes out, good things happen. Yes. So and you start off slowly. I certainly didn't just whack a, a muzzle on them and, and bring them to a dog park because you've got to remember that you've taken their teeth away from them. Yes. So they are, there is going to be a level of, of nervousness. So I started very slow, brought the muzzle out, lots of treats. Yes. Put the muzzle on, lots of treats put it away, short periods of time, Yes. doing it at home, Great. doing it in non-threatening environment. Perfect. So what I want to talk through is they've obviously got the Baskervilles and then we've got these little flimsy ones here, but these are great. So these, the uses for these, of course, are when you're going to the vets. So just a little quick one, Darcy has to get one because he's a bit sore and old now. So he gets a tiny one put on his mouth just to keep the vet protected. Um, but then with the Baskervilles, what do you love about them? I love the Baskervilles because they're soft and they're comfortable, easy to wear. They don't rub. Mm -hmm. the girl girls can still roll. The girls actually still play with each other. Yes. And I know that they're not going to get metal jammed up against any of their body parts. I can feed easy. They can both drink mm -hmm. out of them. Yes, it's about choosing the right one and getting fitted. Yeah. So you can go into your local pet stock store. They have the Baskervilles and they have these ones for the vet visits. And you just talk to a staff member and they'll help you fit them to find the right size. And then of course, as you did, Melissa, just slow, positive reinforcement training to get them used to them. Yep. And for all your dog owners out there, Keep your dogs away when you see another dog in a muzzle. My little Thank tip. Thank you, yes. <laughs>
Become a Petstock Rewards member and earn rewards on thousands of products and services store-wide. Receive great upfront benefits and look out for exclusive member opportunities. Terms and conditions apply. Visit the website for details. There are a number of reasons why our dogs get itchy skin, including flea and environmental allergies. And although environmental allergens for pets will vary by region and climate, some of the most common causes include pollen, molds, animal dander, that's the stuff that sheds from their skin, cleaning solutions and medication. Seasonal changes can also affect your dog's coat and skin. Much like us in the winter, skin becomes dry and flaky due to the cold weather, but also that heating indoors. While in the warmer months, they're exposed to more allergens and the humidity. Not to mention the dogs like my two boys that love to cool down in the river or sea, then roll around in the sand, a perfect breeding ground for bacteria and skin irritations. Of course, we don't want to ruin their fun, so it's important you take care of their coat and skin all year round and look out for any signs of an allergy. This might include excessive itching and scratching, rashes, skin inflammation, or even gnawing on their pores or the skin. When it comes to treating skin allergies, it's important to remember that over-grooming or using products with nasty chemicals can make irritations worse. So using a gentle, natural shampoo to help remove any bacteria and also heal and protect the skin is key. Oatmeal, for example, is a natural healing wonder. It's been used for centuries as a soothing agent to relieve itch and irritation, making the DGG Colloidal Oatmeal Shampoo a great choice for sensitive dogs. It contains a super high content of colloidal oatmeal and aloe vera, which helps to not only soothe, but also heal that aggravated skin. Australia made with no nasty chemicals, it is pH balanced for dogs and not tested on animals, which I love. And so do you, don't you? <laughs> Some other tips for helping dogs with allergies include switching to an unprocessed or a nutrient rich raw food diet to help boost their immune system. Ensuring flea treatments are up to date and in between shampoos, bathing or treating the area with Epsom salts and finely ground oatmeal so you aren't over washing your pooch. If the irritation and itching does continue though, then do see your vet to get to the bottom of the cause. Look for the DGG Colloidal Oatmeal Shampoo at quality pet stores across Australia and New Zealand or visit the DGG website. Want to win a Pawson prize pack valued at over $2,000? One lucky person will win a year's supply of VitaPet treats, Big Dog Pet Foods, NextGuard Spectrum Monthly Chews, a $250 pet stock gift voucher, DGG Grooming and Apparel, and a year's subscription to Dog TV. Plus, there's five consolation prizes of my book, Eat, Play, Love Your Dog. To enter, sign up to our e news and tell us the name of one of the charities featured in this series. All entries also receive a free ebook, so visit futuresatplay.com. Well, that's it for another episode. Hope you enjoyed the show. I forgot how much fun it is to hang out with you guys. Oh. The dogs, not you two. Oh, thanks, Morgs. We hope you guys at home had fun too and learnt a little bit along the way. If you want some more tips, go to the website. And, well, well most importantly, make sure you oh, tune yeah. in next week. <laughs> See you later. Bye. See you. <laughs> Who's Dusty? Oh.